I'm going to tell you all the things Kevin Williamson didn't want to tell you. Spoilers! <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, wow. I'm going to make them up. But if you I'm want to stop by talking about what relationship either you have with either the pre existing film or the, indeed the book that became the pre existing film. You've read the book, I've seen the film. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I watched the film. I. Pretty much just as we were, just before we started shooting, um, I was I was really umming and ahhing about whether I was going to watch it or not. Um, but I, I decided to watch it and just kind of, you know, it helps to just have a look and take what you want from it and 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 don't take what you don't want. And you know, it's like it's a thing where it's also it's a film from '79. Cinema was very different back then, um, so keeping that in mind, I think I was hopefully able to try and keep. Um, Subjective and objective, but, but yeah. you were you were great. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ke Kevin, when he came to me with it, he's such a huge fan of the, of the movie, and he was talking about it like it's I, I have to check it out, and he pitched me the idea for the series, which is, is not easy because um, you know I don't think it you look at it and go it easily translates to a TV show, but he had this great idea for it. I decided to read the book and not watch the movie because I had to execute. And I was actually afraid of, you know, it's one of those things where you see something and then you, you just subconsciously kind of copy it. And I wanted to honor it without um, taking from it, I guess. But uh, I did watch the trailer and I got a good sort of sense of the tone. And then as I started talking to people about it, there were, everyone talked about Malcolm McDowell and how great he is in it. And uh, I think Freddie probably was uh, smart in like in looking at it but uh, I don't think he understood the sort of the shoes he was going to fill when he did it and yeah. uh, but it worked you know he tested so well and I think he brought his own special thing to it what would you say are the biggest challenges by playing a role that somebody already played before you um trying to not trying not to to, to copy or to not get phased by it I think at the end of the day you kind of just try and look at the 50 odd pages that have been put in front of you and try and tell what you think is the truth. So you just kind of look at if goals and motivations look correct on the page, you just go for those and then you'll have, you know, your captain to try and steer you in the direction of, of comedy or, or drama. Or Every, I know. think he looked at the movie and said, Malcolm McDowell is really big in it. He's, <laughs> he's very over the top. Because every take, <laughs> every take, every single take started with Big uh, <laughs> just a quiet version, and I was like, Freddie, come on. <laughs> it was bigger, bigger. My direction constantly was more, more, yeah. and pushing him. Okay. Yeah. Because people will compare. Is that daunting to you? Um, yes and no. I mean, it's just it's that thing that it was in '79, so it, it, they, it just was very different, and I think we've definitely cinema has changed and, and so it's 30 odd years where it's now it's um, you know, so we are a lot more grounded a lot more um, realism has taken a real real swing of things so I think it's you know I hopefully people will see them as they fit in the genre that they're in like companions yeah are you a fan of H.G. Wells? How did you go about playing, a, a, you know, a real historical figure? I wasn't at the time. I didn't. I knew of him. I hadn't read his stuff. I've now been reading his stuff um, and love it. And I especially love reading his stuff and knowing I can read certain bits and chapters where I'm going, oh, that could really serve well as a good inspiration as to why you know had that certain conversations with Jack the Ripper and you can just all these all these ideas and go oh that's brilliant we can really play with that and it's great information to have just in the back for whenever trying to make sense of stuff. Uh, what can you tell us about Wells' relationship with Jack the Ripper and how it will evolve over the season? Oh. I can well I mean it starts off with them being best friends and that's it um, until uh, H.G. Wells realizes that he is Jack the Ripper. Um, they're both very intelligent. They're both um, academics. They they love to challenge each other. Um, they respect each other. And then, of course, that that little tidbit of information changes things. Um, and so, I think they have this constant battle where there's there's um, John Stevenson, who's very um, Capitalism, dog eat dog world, each man for himself. H.G. Wells is very, you know, we're going to help each other. Humanity is kind and good and idealistic, idealistic and wide-eyed. And they're going to constantly try and battle each other with their 
idea of the world. And that's, I think, I don't know yet, but I think I'm assuming throughout the rest of the series, we're gonna, you're gonna see that they, they're gonna challenge each other and they'll both, you know, get tit for tat on that. Is he Moriarty to your home? Ooh. I mean, I'll say I love that. I love Sherlock so much. I'll, I don't know if I want. That's a comparison. I'm not sure I want. But in this, they're um, intentionally cast as kind of yeah as, as compatriots who become each other's nemesis. Yes, they have that similarity between each other and that common ground. But then just that sort of like tweak of good and evil. I think thematically, there's if you look at Kevin Williamson's work, you know, um, certainly the shows we've done together, Vampire Diaries or The Following, there's that not only a love triangle, but the the, the men have that relationship, uh, whether they start in a certain place and then become nemesis and, and then sometimes even get back and well, are they fighting for a common cause. I think the beauty of what Kevin has set up and what he pitched early on in terms of we have all this, this amazing body of work that H.G. Wells wrote and he's considered the father of science fiction and a man ahead of his time. So if, if the, the experiences he has in the Andy's adventures, whether they're just pursuing John, or when he gets to John, what happens, uh, what, you know, how those adventures inform or inspire the, the books he wrote. So I think it's going to have a little bit of everything. And you just mentioned a comparison that I had made early on, and then for the same reason, I was like, oh, maybe <laughs> just not go there just yet. Yeah. Did you take a lot of creative liberties when it came to the H.G. Wells character compared to what he was like? I don't think it was, it, we didn't take a lot of liberties. We definitely looked at, at some of the things that he wrote about and um, you can piece together a personality, um, not just from his, uh, his novels, but you know, he wrote essays and papers on, on, on science and he was a great thinker. So we've taken parts of that and put it into our character and a lot of it, we, you know, we've only done the pilot. I've, I've seen multiple outlines in a few scripts, so I, I know that Kevin is borrowing from uh, the real HG and, and bringing that into his personality and into his character. Uh, as far as real liberties, I think how we start to change him in present day, that's when that'll happen. There's been kind of a long-standing trend of books being, like YA books being adapted into film, Harry Potter and things like that. And now you kind of have an opportunity to inspire kids who are reading teenagers to read books that they may not have associated with or even thought to read. So I was just wanted to get your guys' thoughts on how you feel about possibly influencing a new generation of kids and younger people to read new and older books. I, I think it's a great point because um, I was always uh, a fan of I'm a fan of science fiction, and I had read all of, not all of them, I like four or five of his novels. When Kevin pitched me the idea and told me the sort of premise, that's exactly what came to mind. I said, what a great way to introduce people to the island of Dr. Moreau. I think maybe, you know, and people here maybe know what it is, don't know what it is, but when you see it in our story, it'll, it might pique your curiosity and hopefully take you back and go, I want to just know a little bit more. Um, so I, I, hope, I hope that that's something that comes out of it. Yeah, I, I, I just now reading the books, just it, the idea that younger generations could be influenced to read it is a, is very cool. I know that it it is slightly older English. It's a little. It's not. It's not a an easy page turner like a Harry Potter or a Twilight. Um, but if younger generations could get into it, then it's it's such good such good stories they're really enjoyable and just yeah I've, I've loved it so if, if, if it can do that then that'd be amazing can you elaborate on more um, underlying themes you might want to address during seasons of the show or? yeah you talk a little bit about um, his ideology and the utopia and yeah, I mean, that's uh, to me. It's the, there's that huge that difference to it between the two, and 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 he, HG is so obsessed with the idea that science and technology will advance us to a a peaceful time, um, and there's that responsibility in science. It's that it, it kind of reminds me of that sort of Galileo being persecuted by the church. Like when you when you discover something new, there there's a responsibility with that and how that can affect the human race, and it could be for good or for worse, and um, so there's that battle that he's constantly, he's going to be, I think, really pushing for the human race, 
will eventually find its way. John Stevenson is saying that we're all animals, we're all going to kill each other, you know, it's doggy dog. Um, and I think it's incredibly like, relevant to today because yeah. all the things that he says at the beginning of the pilot, I don't think anyone has seen it, right? The, the pilot. He gives a whole speech about, uh, Wells gives a speech about how in the future through technology, through, and this is something he really believed in, we didn't make this up. Uh, t he thought that technology would bring people together, right? And it has, right? You can talk on cell phones and communicate in ways that you couldn't do 10 years ago. And that that communication, that together, that ability to bring people together would make for a utopian society. So when he gets here and he turns on the news and he sees that people are killing each other, walking into classrooms and shooting each other, or he's profoundly disappointed and he's done nothing to advance the human race. Where John Stevenson is already in that space. He believes people are animals. So thematically, we'll play with that um, in series. Yeah. It's fun stuff to, to deal with. Yeah. That's, that's that kind of thing. Reading, having read now Art of Dr. Moreau, just that idea of these animals that are being forced to be humans and put in there in certain ways. And if they start, if you teach them enough, they will start to be humans. But when nighttime comes, they start becoming more animalistic. And if they don't get trained, they will eventually revert back to their animal ways. And it's that. So as soon as you re I'm reading that, I'm just thinking of his. You know that battle that he's, he's, he's right. arguing. And and what is it present day that inspired him to think that? Yeah, and then just thinking that we're we're telling that story that maybe it was a lot of discussions with with Jack the Ripper. Your pilot was screened on preview night. Are you tempted in any of those scenarios to stand at the back of the screening and try to take a read? We are screening tonight for the first time. Oh, okay. I thought you were screening on Wednesday. Night. No, we're screening oh, tonight for the first time, uh, and I will be there because I I haven't seen it with an audience. I sat through the test screening, but we're in a room looking at uh, a monitor with a bunch of um, numbers on it. And as people turn the dial, and we can see what they react to and don't react to, but you can't feel the reactions because I'm not there with them. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about that because you, you, you do sort of see what plays, what doesn't play, but uh, I like that experience of it. Given that Friends spectacularly failed its test screening, are you concerned that one of those hasn't learned their lesson in 20 years? The test audiences aren't always a great... Oh, absolutely. I use that I mean, all Friends is in for the Friends Look, document. I am prepared with a speech. Document, yeah. I'm prepared with a speech every time I go into a test screening <laughs> where if we test poorly, I'm like, come on, look at Friends. disastrous test. It's disastrous. It's lethal. And then when we test well... I'm just like I told you. It was a win-win. I'm not going to lose. No way. <laughs> what do you want the audience to do tonight? What do you want? The, what do you want to hear? I, honestly, it's a different tone than what Kevin and I have done together because it, it does have some levity and it does have. I don't want to say comedy, but we, you know, I knew when I was shooting it and directing it. I wanted more. I wanted him to be bigger. I wanted moments to play, not an out loud laugh, but for you to enjoy it. He calls it a wrong. And it, that's, I think that's a good way to put it. So I would love to, to feel that. I would love for audiences to kind of enjoy it for that because it has a twist and turns, which I, I think will keep bringing you back. But more than that, it was like, that was fun. And that's it. So I hope, I hope that we get that. Pretty, how did you, he, you know, he keeps saying, he keeps telling you to go bigger, go bigger, how mm. did you do that? Uh, just by trusting. You have to, you have to trust in your captain, and you know, just if you go bigger, you know that as long as you go bigger with, with keeping truth, then you're fine. As long as you start feeling yourself doing a huge gesture or something that doesn't feel that it's grounded in a certain way or it doesn't come from somewhere of truth, that's when you know you're like you're, you're hamming it up or something. But as long as you, as long as you can kind of find truth in what you're doing, then. Just gotta go for that's it. a tough note, by the way, for an actor to take because it's easy for me to say go bigger, but what does it mean? And I was always really impressed with Freddie's. He would question. He'd say, "I'm afraid it's going to play silly, or I'm afraid it's going to be this." And then we'd have a conversation. And to his credit, and this is what I respect in, in the actors I've worked with who who know the craft is they do trust, but they don't just blindly do what I'm telling them. They go, "Okay." I, I'm gonna go bigger. How do I go bigger and still make it my thing? And Freddie did that, like the little thing, it, the stupid little mannerisms that um, he he did um, that I watched, and he didn't really change his performance that much, but he did something with the, his hands, and it made it funny. And I was like, there it is, that's it. And he was like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, it didn't need to really go 
necessarily, he didn't have to get huge, but it was some <laughs> thing. Yeah, there was one, one scene where I came out, and he's just like, just a little bigger, like, I want to feed people. And so I just like, go much bigger, and then he came back, he was like, okay, let's Charlie Chaplin, and just like, <laughs> just, like, like all the way out, walking all big, and like, it was yeah. crazy. But, yeah. And how's the dynamic with you and Josh? Uh, great, yeah, Josh is great. We, um, we, had, um, we had a good time, and I, I love that relationship with the, those two characters. Um, and bizarrely enough, like they come from such a specific um, class and type and everything in England. You know, he's a doctor, the, uh, he's a journalist. They're both very similar. And then I found out that Josh, he was like, "You went to St John's Beaumont." And I was like, "Yes." I, and it's a prep school in England. We went to the same school together. He was the year below me. I didn't even know. Um, he remembered because we had um, my my real last name. He he recognized it, and he was in my brother's year, and he was a good swimmer, so he. He recognized it and we actually grew up in the same very small little area of England at the same time um, and so just certain similarities and then I think it was ma- kind of magically cast that way really and they, they oddly enough have the same like I think he's the perfect HG in his temperament and Josh is the perfect uh, John because you know uh, Freddie will be like he's trusting I want you know very HG and Josh is very uh, <laughs> There's no fucking way I'm doing that. There's no, I'm not. I'm no, I'm not. And then you, and you have to, and I'm like, rrr, rrr. and with Freddie, I'm like, it's Freddie, please. And he's like, okay. I'll <laughs> Why did you say that? Where would you go? You could jump in a time machine. Well, I've been saying 1950s America. They keep like, they think it's bizarre, but I think that was a really cool time. Like the American dream. And everything was just, you know, the you know, cat food and and, and drive-ins and the mood. Like it was like a just. I, to me, that was a really cool time. Um, I think I've always, I, I keep saying the past just because I, I always suffer from nostalgia. I always, I love to romanticize anything in my past. I guess I just block out all the bad memories and just remember all the good ones and you know, the rose tint. Yeah. I'd go back to 1950 just to punch him in the face <laughs> and say, why would you come here? <laughs> and then I'd get in the time machine and go to the future so that I could see all the things that I'm not going to get to see because I'm going to die any day. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. But the 50s, fine, sure. Canned yeah. food and microwave ovens. And <laughs> hey, it was cool. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yes.